it's scary and you don't you don't want this on your neck somebody tried to kill me drake bushy is homeless on a warm july night he and a friend found a place to sleep at dress plaza i remember falling asleep and then i remember waking up and there was blood all over me he and his friend were attacked their throats slashed i look down and then i see blood and i look over at my friend and he was cut too Police believe that incident is connected with the Monday morning stabbing of Robert Brown. This surveillance video shows a white male who police believe is 49-year-old Brian Powers. So investigators had to dig for answers. I came into the downtown area this morning and began making contact with a lot of individuals, particularly the homeless shelters in the area. Tracy Gorman is the president of the Evansville Rescue Mission where Bushy stays. People bring uh, their own biases to uh, this world and sometimes those, those biases cause them to act out in, um, in, in ways that are reprehensible. He says when cases like this arise, he and other shelters like his work closely with police. We are always more than willing to open up our, our list to them to help them find individuals. So it's important for all of them to be aware of what's going on. In this case, it's important for them to have the information so they can share information with us. The tactic worked. We got a call at about 1.20 that Mr. Powers had just signed in at the United Caring Shelter. Should Powers prove to be the man who stabbed Bushy, the young man says the experience changed his life. You want to just be more cautious and you're more careful how you look at people and stuff like that. It does make me feel at peace. It makes me feel good that he's locked up. But he'll live with a constant reminder of the dangers of living on the street. From Evansville, Ryan Brashler, Eyewitness News. Broken glass, high flames, and dozens of emergency vehicles here on Big Cynthiana Road in Vandenberg County. It's a mobile home. Uh, the homeowner arrived and said that there were no occupants, so at this time we can only believe that there were no occupants in the building. Captain Cindy Grease says no one was home, but crews weren't able to stay inside long since the roof was close to caving in. Advised that there was a possible collapse, so they, everyone exited the building. Uh, that's always an, you know, a possibility with any structure fire. German Township says it called in extra help. Other units brought water tankers to park closer to the home. The flames were easily 30, 35 feet above the house. Uh, when I first saw the fire, it was, you could say, fully engulfed. And then by the time I got across the street and got a close-up picture, it, the whole thing was in flames. John Bassmeyer lives nearby. I just felt so helpless. I don't know what the deputies felt like, but here you're watching this house. It's, it's already a total loss, but you're just standing there watching it. For Bassmeyer, last week's fire on West Columbia was next door to his business, and this fire was basically in his backyard. We were there next to, next to the old firehouse that I own, and then uh, I live about 200 yards west of the fire that was here, and I hope that's the extent of my fire experiences for this year. Experiences Bassmeyer sees up close, but for these men and women, it comes with the territory. In Vandenberg County, Tabney Dozier, Eyewitness News. In the 10,000 acres of the White family farm. No kernels at all. There's hardly room for hope. It's just basically a, a nightmare. <laughs> I don't know any other way of saying it. For Ryan White, it's a nightmare because of the sights of shriveled stocks. That's not good. <laughs> no, no, not at all. It's haunting because of the history. It's the worst I've ever seen as far as drought. It's, it was really odd. Last year we went into an extreme uh, wet, uh, wet year and then this year it's just been unreal, the, the drought. One extreme follows another, I guess. White is the face of farmers across the country, left to deal with a once in a generation drought. As a function of their jobs, farmers are optimistic people. I'd hate to be doom and gloom all the time. But optimism can only go so far. Well, there's some guys that say that uh, some fields are, there ain't going to be anything in the field to harvest. And, uh, and I feel that there will be some fields that way. And, uh, you know, it's a shame because you put all that work and effort into it and then not able to harvest any of it. It really, uh, it really hurts, hurts your pride. Pride and the pocketbook. The losses will exceed hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you had a field of them, you'd have some. A good harvest will yield more than 100 bushels an acre. And this year, it ain't going to be half of that. A harvest like this one tries the most tested of farmers. It costs a lot to put out an acre of corn or beans these days, and it, it really hurts when you can't retrieve that dollar at the end of the year. Even in the spacious acres of the White family farm, 
these days, there's hardly room for optimism. And you put all this effort into producing the best crop that you can possibly produce, you know, do the best job that you can, and then factors that you have no control over seem to, to take that away from you. And it really, it really hurts. It could happen anywhere. It's a horror story that played out at a Colorado movie theater. No one knows why he did what he did. But this was not a movie. It was a, a shock just because I, I'm, we're in the business here, and so we, it, it, it hits a little closer to home, I think. It's tragic. Some guy just snapped or what, what have you. I mean, people are just there to see, have fun, see a good movie. Batman fan Andrew Jackson came to see The Dark Knight Rises at Showplace Cinema East in Evansville. He says he feels safe, but you take a risk anywhere. You don't know where somebody might go crazy. I mean. I felt safe coming here. I mean, if something happens, it, it happens. I mean, I can't change that. I felt terrible for the people who was there. I'm also glad I didn't go to a, you know, an early showing. I just thought I'd come today when there'd be less people around in the movie theater. Showplace Cinema's marketing director, Diane Miles, says their theaters have security cameras and they have managers and employees patrol the auditoriums. We do try to keep everybody as safe as possible. We do our best. Miles says they have no plans to add metal detectors or change any safety procedures. Please don't let that stop you from going about your life. You can't really can't let it stop you from living your life. Miles says she hopes nothing like this ever happens in the tri-state and her prayers go out to the Colorado victims and their families.